Hi, this is Kit with Scrapbook Warehouse. Today we're going to use oxide distress inks to make a pretty butterfly card. First, let's show you the inside, which we've stamped and stenciled. This is the kind of technique that you can really play with. It may not look very nice to begin with, but once it dries, the colors will blend together and the final product will amaze you. I'm going to make a number of panels during this video to show you how they all come out differently. First, I start off with a generous wash of water on my watercolor paper. Pick three or four colors that go well together with a wide, wet brush, and once I have an idea of where I want which colors, I pick up my pigment and lay it down on the wet paper. Now that I'm finished, I've set my paper with the heat tool, and I'm going to use a bit of water and a smaller brush to flick on color droplets. To add a bit of interest, I'm going to use the second generation stamping technique with this stamp from Stampers Anonymous and Tim Holtz. To get a distressed, faded look, I stamp first on a scrap piece of cardstock or paper towel, and then I stamp right on my card panel. This gives me the second generation stamp impression. If you want a darker, clearer stamp impression, just stamp directly on the card panel first. Now I'm making a second panel with the same colors to show you how a totally different look can be achieved using the exact same materials and techniques. For an even more muted pastel look while your panel is still wet, press it with a paper towel to lift up some of that color. Once you're ready, go ahead and dry it with your heat gun. I'm going to make a third panel now, but this time I'm going to pre-cut it with a die cut to give it a decorative edge. You can go ahead and skip this technique since you've already seen it twice by jumping to the two minute mark. That's when I start assembling the final card. Taking my finished panel and the blue mat that I cut together earlier, I trimmed them down to leave me enough room to stamp a sentiment on the white cardstock below. Now I'm going to use my butterfly dies and cut out of my main decorated panel. I'll use my pokey tool to get rid of all the little pieces from my die cut, and then I'll use a mini blending tool as well as some oxide inks to add a bit of color to make these butterflies pop once they're on the card. I'm also going to add a little bit more of oxide inks along the edges of my panel. That just brings all my colors in together and gives it a finalized look. You don't have to do this step, but I like how it adds a little bit of extra. Just using a bit of splatter on my card gives it some more color and interest. I'm almost ready to assemble all my pieces of my card, but first I'm going to use a pencil to mark the layer of my top panel, and that will allow me to stamp my sentiment in the right spot. I'm going to go ahead and use the repositionable easy dots in order to glue this. It allows me to get all the little edges so they won't lift off the card. This is very important with intricate cut die cuts. I'm going to use the same adhesive on my butterflies, but only on the body so I can lift the wings up once they're on the card and make it 3D. Now that I've gone ahead and put my butterflies on, I'm going to assemble the front of my card and get ready to stencil and stamp the inside sentiment. I've used the same die cut butterfly to make a stencil out of a scrap piece of cardstock. I arrange this over the inside panel that I'm going to glue inside my card and use a bit of oxide inks and a mini blending tool to put my color on. The technique I used here starts off with a flick movement so that I don't deposit too much color on my cardstock all at once. First I ink up half my stamp because I only want to use part of the sentiment and then using a baby wipe I make sure that only the words I want stamped are covered in ink. If you're wondering why I'm using an extra panel for the inside of my card, Stamping isn't always perfect, so this way I won't wreck my card. Adding an extra panel just takes that pressure and stress away. Now I'll put a little bit more color spatters all over my panel, just to give it a bit more interest, and we're pretty much finished. I'll use some adhesive and glue it inside my card, and it's ready to go off to somebody special. 
Now, if you're anything like me, you love glitter and sparkle. So I'm going to use some glossy accents to add some raindrops onto my panel, as well as some sequins too. This is an extra step you don't have to do if it's not in your taste, but it is definitely for me. can't go wrong with this technique because it's so versatile. If you're not happy with how dark the colors are, you can just wet it down and use a paper towel to lift that color up. If the panel doesn't turn out the way you want it for the project you have in mind, you can always save it to die cut flowers out of or use in some other way for a different project later on. It's a versatile technique that you'll use over and over for cards of any occasion. Thank you so much. This has been Kit from Scrapbook Warehouse bringing you this card example today. Please like and comment and let us know what you think. All the products I used in this class are listed below. If you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any other classes. Thanks and happy crafting!